What up players, it's Warbots Tay. Welcome back. It's my final video in this first series of videos looking at the prologue frame for the Kingdom Death Monster 1.5 core set. And this guy is huge. He is bulked out in detail. He looks really, really great. Standing next to a survivor, he's at least a head tall and uh, much bulkier and wider. He's got a lot of stuff on him and uh, let's take a look. First you have his armor which I wanted to paint in a kind of dull old gold. First of all when you talk about the butcher, what he is, how he fits into the world, he's basically this guy in the, f in the fluff in the fiction. He was, uh, he, he was kind of cowardly. He wanted to be brave but he wasn't and uh, so one day he found this mask and he put it on and it imbued him with strength and power but also rage and uh, uncontrollable like thirst for, for killing and battle and stuff. And uh, one day he just couldn't take it off. And his armor, he couldn't take off his armor either. He was just like stuck into it. So now I think basically the, the fluff is that he's just this empty suit of armor running, running around with little bits of human flesh still stuck inside and the enchanted mask is making it go around and kill everything. He's got a bunch of grisly trophies. He cuts off his victim's faces and he puts them all over his body and he takes the torches because he's just that messed up. You can see all of the survivors have torches. They all come with torches when they emerge from the plane of faces. And this guy just myrtleizes them and takes them, maybe puts their faces on them just, just for funsies. And uh, it's so great. So what I wanted to do was not, um, when you look at the artwork for him, it's a lot of dull, drab, dark tones, which uh, makes sense because Kingdom Death is, is a lot of darkness. But I wanted to pop out different colors. I wanted to do some interesting color work. And I think I achieved that. Let me tell you how I did that. First of all, I primed him in gray. It's a good starting uh, color to work up from. Then I left the gray for the fur on his arms, but I decided to do the fur on his back in a brown, this rich Mornfang brown color with which uh, highlights up to bone and cream. So I painted his back cape in Mornfang Brown. And all of that there. Don't worry about picking out individual details when you're laying down base colors. It's really all about blocking out those colors so that your eye knows where to put the highlights and the details and how to uh, arrange those colors later. The gold is actually a scale model called uh, Black Gold, which you can get from their uh, I think it was their gold set, and you might, I might have used uh, some of them. In fact, I did. I used a bunch of these colors last year or a couple years ago in my Amazon set and in my uh, Boyard Dwarves for a, a separate commission. It's a really, really great way of creating this old aged gold look that doesn't look bright and shiny and, uh, dare I say it, Stormcast, Stormcast Eternally looking like really yellowy and uh, kind of unrealistic. I wanted to go for a more dark and uh, gritty looking gold and, and one that looks at, like actual metal. So that scale color product is, is really good for that. For the other colors, you might see uh, some of the skin, some of the faces stretched out across the model. So gross. I uh, used, there we go. I used Bugman's Glow as a base and then I built up with different skin tones, Cadian flesh tone, and uh, just kept highlighting. I wanted the skin of his hands and his face to look sickly, not like uh, like healthy, and so I went with more yellowish colors, like uh, the Kislev flesh tones for that. His interesting, uh, another interesting like facet are his, his boots. They look like clawed, almost like a scarab feet. And it looks like his feet are kind of cleft right down the center. So a very inhuman looking detail for the model. The silvers are all lead belcher shaded with known oil, highlighted back up with runefang steel. And um, you're gonna have a lot of fun highlighting up the faces because they're just stretched out all across his armor. They look really, really gross. And um, a lot of them look like they're smiling, which is just because he just takes people's faces and he stretches them out and puts them, puts them on himself. So gross. And he's got like a, a Pumbaa warthog skull on his left shoulder pad there. So I just painted it up in skull colors. Rackard flesh shaded with known oil highlighted back up. And uh, there's that infamous mask. This was hard to assemble on the model. I, I'm gonna 
uh, share a little bit of, of, of my tip with it. It looks kind of like a dog skull with a lot of horns, but using a plastic, uh, plastic cement, a plastic glue that uh, bonds almost immediately, rather than the, the Tamiya plastic glue is almost like watery. So when you put it on, you kind of have to hold it for a second for it to do its thing and melt the plastic and rebond it. But using a tester's plastic cement was a snap because the minute it goes on, you stick the other side, uh, the snout to the, the skull, it, it almost instantly adheres to it and it creates a, just as strong of a bond, I think. So now you can really see the detail on his cape, Mornfang Brown, uh, shaded with Agrax Earthshade for all the individual little uh, little tufts of hair I highlighted back up first with Carrack Stone and then Rackarth Flesh. The lanterns I did just the same as the starting survivors. If you want to see how I did that, you can check out that video. And uh, some of the lanterns, like I said, have spaces stretched over them. So um, using some Drukai Violet or a purple wash will also help you create some uh, really nice, disgusting, like clotted blood looking effects underneath the skin and um, stay away from using too much red if you're doing tanned stretched out skin like that because uh, you don't need that bright red blood color it, you want it to look almost like it's it's been stretched out for for a little while and it's just kind of tanning like if you see on his look right under his left shoulder blade he's got two little faces on those lanterns there and then he's got some faces on his belt oh, it's just so so sick so sick and awesome. So this guy was a lot of fun to paint. His straps on his arms are basically just Steel Legion drab with um, shaded with that Agrax Earth Shade or Nuln Oil. Highlighted back up, maybe you can add a little bit of Rackard Flesh to it, but you don't have to. The uh, tufts on his arm that are that gray hair color, I basically use the same colors as the White Lion. So if you'd like to see how I did that, the White Lion mane, you can check out that video. But uh, that's about it for this miniature, and um, I had a lot of fun painting him up. Let me know if you have any questions, leave a comment down below before you go. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next video.